Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyak Jitani. I'm actually an intern in the internal medicine department at Stanford, and I'll be a rising second year. And today I wanted to go over the basics of pre-rounding because this is something that's very important for almost anyone in any specialty, but it's also really something that's been used by medical students, PAs, nursing students. Um, you're going to need to know what it means to pre-round because you may have preceptors that you're presenting to, and I'll Ultimately, the workflow I'm going to teach you is going to be specialty agnostic, and the biggest points I'm going to teach you are usually going to be career agnostic. For anyone who's seeing a patient for the first time, these fundamentals are important to grasp. So now, let's get the glasses on, and uh, let's go into first even defining what pre-rounding is. Rounding, you may know, is a very fundamental medical concept where you actually go and see the patient, and you round around the patient and talk to the patient about how the day is going. Um, pre-rounding is one step before that. Basically, it's when you, as the intern or primary care provider, uh, go and talk to a patient when they're admitted to a hospital before you talk to your attending or even your supervising resident about them. By pre-rounding, you actually are going to be the frontline provider for that patient. You gather all the data, formulate your own plan, and come up with a hypothesis as to what's going on and ultimately how to get this patient to feel a little bit better. One of the biggest advantages and scary parts of pre-rounding is that you're doing it all on your own. You're not going to have anyone supervising you. It's up to you. When you start your day, you're going to have a list of people. You're going to need to go see all of those people. You're going to need to review all of their labs. And then you're ultimately going to need to come up with which of these people are the most sick, who is someone who I want to talk about first, and who is someone who I'm not as worried about who might actually be close to getting discharged today. All of these things are things that will be happening during pre-rounding. The way I break pre-rounding down is I break it down into four components and I break it down the same way I often think about my notes. When you write a note on any patient, usually it's in the format of a SOAP note, subjective aspects of the patient, objective aspects of the patient, um, the assessment of the patient, how you think they're doing overall, and ultimately the plan for the patient that needs to be executed during that day. I break pre-rounding down into these exact same four things. However, before you start you need to remember that every patient, when you go into their room and try to analyze those four aspects, still needs to have a one-liner. A one-liner in medicine is basically when you describe a patient as succinctly as you can in one sentence, and that's why it's often called a one-liner. And the fundamentals of a one-liner can be very tough to grasp initially, but I'm going to show you exactly what a one-liner is because before you even go to analyze your patient in the morning, you need to have a sense of who they are. So here's how. Um, you can come up with a one-liner by, by yourself, actually. Think about it in the rules of threes. You want three aspects and three examples of each of those aspects. So, for example, you want three pieces of the patient's past medical history. You want three pieces of their HPI. And you want three lab data points to help you formulate that patient. And it, it's up to you what you think is most important. And oftentimes, you'll, you'll change this one-liner to match the patient's overall day-to-day -day course. But, for example, here's a 57-year-old male with a past medical history of type 2 diabetes with an A1C of 8%, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with a ejection fraction of 25%, and colon cancer status post colectomy in 2018, who's presenting with shortness of breath um, with negative troponins and a negative CTPE exam, and his exam is concerning for heart failure exacerbation, right? So this is a one-liner because now you actually know the patient, you know three of the medical problems that he or she had in the past, you know, three lab data points, right? You can see that their A1C is eight. So that tells you how severe their diabetes is. You can see that their ejection fraction is quite low. And then you also see that they have had negative troponins. So you're not worried about anything cardiac happening with this patient, right? And then you have three pieces of their HPI. What did they present with? They present with shortness of breath. They ended up having negative troponins. That makes me less concerned for a cardiac cause. And then they also had a negative CTPE. That makes me realize they don't have something emergent that's going to potentially kill them. And now I sum it all up with what I think is going on, which is the heart failure exacerbation. This is the one-liner. You should have a one-liner set for every single patient you pre-round on because it guides your assessment, right? If you just blindly pre-round on someone, you don't know what to focus on. But for example, with this patient, if they're presenting with shortness of breath, maybe we focus on their lungs as when we physically examine them. Maybe we actually look at how their procalcitonin is doing as a lab marker. Maybe we actually look at their chest x-ray, right? It guides the rest of your plan that you're going to do when you end up pre-rounding on this patient. So now let's actually start with the aspects. You've, you've created your one-liner. Now you're, you've got to work at 6 a.m. The first thing you're going to do is see all your patients. 
The first thing you're going to do for the subjective aspect for every patient is see if anything happened overnight. If something happened overnight, how did it make them feel? And ultimately, there's going to be someone who took care of them overnight. So you can actually ask them, what did you do when this event occurred? So oftentimes, the next step is then going to be the objective data. So if something did happen, what objective data did we collect to figure out what was going on? If someone got worsening shortness of breath overnight, chances are you probably got a chest x-ray. Chances are you probably got some lab. What were those labs? And let's say there were no overnight events. Well, if there's no overnight events, the only objective data you want to focus on is usually the morning labs. So those will come in in the morning. And so oftentimes you can use those labs as your objective data. So even if nothing happened overnight, but you notice that a patient's white count went up, well, maybe that's something I need to focus on. Did they start steroids recently? Do they have signs of an infection? Do they have signs that maybe the white count just went up as a reactive process in response to a recent procedure? All of those things need to be thought about um, from the objective data standpoint. The other thing you also want to think about is something happened overnight. Don't just focus on labs. Focus also on imaging. If they got a CT abdomen and pelvis, if they got cultures, blood cultures, urine cultures, if they actually called an overnight urgent consult, what were the results of all of those things? Because as the biggest goal of pre-rounding is to bridge the gap between whatever happened since the last time you saw the patient to the moment you're about to see them this morning. If you can summarize that, then the attendee is going to have a great idea of what happened and you're going to have an even better idea of what happened. And then the assessment and plan is the last step of the pre-rounding. How did the two previous pieces of data that you collected, including the subjective as well as the objective, change what's going to happen with this patient? So for example, if someone acutely decompensated overnight, maybe we need to think about getting them into the ICU today. If someone got much better overnight and they're finishing day five of seven of their antibiotic course, maybe they're ready to go home today on oral antibiotics. If someone is in the middle and you don't entirely know what's going on, maybe we need to look at their labs today. Maybe we need to reculture them and figure out if they truly have an infection before we continue this antibiotic course. All of those things are the last step of pre-rounding. We want to be doing this for every patient. So now let me actually walk you through an entire sample of what I would do for a patient who I'm pre-rounding on. So remember, let's just go back to this patient I made up, the 57-year-old who came in with shortness of breath. I come in the next morning and I'm like, hey, what happened with patient um, 57? What happened to him? The overnight intern tells me, oh, his, worst, his O2 requirement got much worse. He went from two liters to six liters overnight. His chest x-ray showed some worsening high basal opacities that made me concerned that he was maybe a bit more fluid overloaded. So I gave him IV Lay 620 and that's about it. And so I say, okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, thank you. And then what I'll do is before I even go to see the patient, I'll look over that imaging. I'll look over their morning labs and then I'll ultimately think about what would what's going on. So maybe at that morning, I then go to their labs and I see that their white blood cell count is up to 10 from six and their O2 requirement is still at six liters and he's much more sleepy this morning. Then one thing that I'm already thinking is, is this truly a heart failure exacerbation? If it is, the LASIK should have helped. Maybe we need to give them more LASIKs, but maybe we need to broaden our differential to also include pneumonia. And if I think they have pneumonia, maybe I want to get a pro-cal to support that diagnosis. Maybe I want to get blood cultures. Maybe I want to get a repeat chest x-ray. Maybe I need to consider what kind of pneumonia it is. If they're super somnolent, did they just aspirate? Did they have any evidence of aspiration overnight? Or is it a hospital-acquired pneumonia where I need to think about covering for pseudomonas? Right? These are all things that instantly enter my head when I'm pre-rounding and I see new pieces of data. Um, the other thing I would think about is, hey, he had worsening shortness of breath. I know we had a CTPE when he first came in. Do we have any signs of asymmetric swelling? Did this patient just develop a DVT because he's been clotted, he's been in the hospital bed for so long? Or, you know, he has already pretty crappy heart failure. Did he have flash pulmonary edema? These are all things that you want to think about in the morning. Obviously, you don't have to flesh out the plan. The whole point of pre-rounding is to gather the data and at least come up with a hypothesis. Because if you're wrong, that's fine. You're going to learn. But if you don't at least think about what's happening, then you're just reporting data. You're more of a reporter, which is a very good thing to be. Uh, but ideally, as you develop um, as, a, as a clinician, one of the biggest steps you want to make is your own decisions, right? Um, now let's walk through a different scenario. Let's say it's the same exact patient, but I walk in in the morning time and the overnight person said, hey, the patient's O2 requirements overnight went down from two liters. He's essentially on one liter. Um, he's doing much better. No acute events overnight. Well, then I'm already thinking, okay, I'll look at his labs. His white count looks good. Maybe I'm thinking this patient looks like he could get 
close to discharge today. Maybe I'll just give him another IV, IV Lasix dose this morning, and then I'd consider switching him over to oral Lasix, and then he might be able to be discharged. And then already I move on to the next patient, right? I, I repeat this for every patient. And by doing this, one, you're learning, but two, you get really good at figuring out, okay, is there something I'm missing here? Do we want to do any more workup? And if so, what is the workup we want to do? So this is kind of how I approach pre-rounding. Hopefully it was helpful for all of you. If it was, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.